Martin, I'm the team manager at Warsaw Mash, and today I'm going to be introducing the new Warsaw multi agency referral form. The multi agency referral form is a pathway into the MASH for professionals where there has been an identified need for level four statutory support and intervention, for a child or young person where there is evidence of serious, prolonged, or complex needs that are having a major impact on their expected outcomes or there is serious concern for their safety. In line with the right help, right time continuum of need, these acute needs identified under level four may require statutory intensive support for children and young people to be protected. And in such circumstances, professionals would complete a MARF and send this to MASH for screening. Now, there's been a review of the current MARF and the review has taken place jointly between social care and agencies across the partnership. Now, there has been a focus on capturing parental consent and to ensure we're working in an open and transparent way with families. Now, at every stage of need, professionals must discuss their concerns with the family and request consent to share information to get the right help and support at the right time. Unless doing so will significantly increase the risk of harm to the child. Now, you can locate the multi-agency referral form on Warsaw Safeguarding Partnership website, as highlighted below. Now, obtaining parental consent is really, really important, and we need to be informing parents and guardians as to why we are worried. We need to offer help and support and to keep offering help and support. We need to inform them of your decision to submit a MARF and can gain consent to do so. Please share any information that's recorded on the MARF with them. Remember, this is about their child. It's recorded on the child's file and they can request to have sight of it at any given time. Please be open, be honest and be transparent. If having a conversation with the parent or guardian may place the child at greater risk of harm, please make contact with the multi-agency safeguarding hub at the earliest opportunity. What will happen if a MARF is submitted without parental consent? Now, parental consent is mandatory and must be gained in order for MASH screening to commence. So the MASH cannot complete any checks or speak to MASH members about the subject child without parental consent having been gained. Now, that's why it's really, really important that any MARF submitted into the service, there is clearly parental consent documented. Now, those MARFs that are sent into our service that do not have parental consent will not be accepted by the team. We will not be able to information share among agencies. We will not be able to conduct checks and we will not be able to have any MASH discussions regarding the child. Or family. So what will happen is the MARF will be uploaded onto our computer system and no further action will be taken. The MASH partner um, or member that represents your individual setting will be advised of your intention to submit a MARF without parental consent. They will make contact with you and encourage you to speak to the parent directly. Two things will happen then. There will be a letter that is sent directly to the parent to make them aware that you've attempted to make a referral into our service without talking to them. They will be directed to your agency to discuss further action as necessary and the outcome of your attempted contact with our service will be sent to you in writing. The MARF has been reviewed jointly by social care and the partnership and a number of changes have been made. The drive and the focus has been the need for transparency with our families and gaining parental consent, having a clear insight and understanding of the child's needs and the impact of harm and ensuring appropriate application of threshold. Now, the following slides will talk about the sections of the MARF that need to be completed and we'll give some examples on how we can capture impact of harm 
how we can have a clear insight and understanding of the child's needs and their lived experience and how we can ensure that we're applying appropriate threshold criteria. The revised document and the responses to consent have been considered and signed off by the MASH management group. So the first thing that we're asking for as you look at the MARF are basic details. So we want to know about you and we want to know about the subject, subject child. So we want to know um, your details. So we need your email address, your direct desk line, your work mobile telephone number. We need to know what your job title is in your designation and whether you're a designated safeguarding lead for your setting. We need to know who you've spoken to about the referral. Have you sought any advice from members of our team, the duty social worker, your line manager or your DSL within your setting? Please record any names clearly and when you've spoken to them. Now the subject child we really need to ensure that we're creating social care records for the correct children and the correct families. We need to ensure that there are matches. Now, we can do that by ensuring we have the full name, the date of birth, the address, the ethnicity of the subject child, family composition. Also provided an NHS number if you have this. We can very quickly match children just from the NHS numbers. In order to prevent any delay in the screening process, please ensure you have submitted as much information regarding the family as possible. What is the impact upon the child? Now, this section, we're asking you to consider what the impact is upon the child. So if you are submitting a math because you're worried about an event or something that the child's been exposed to or an accumulation of, of um, concerns, we're asking you to think about how has this had an impact upon this child and some examples are given below that may trigger you to think about the impact. So are they withdrawn? Are there changes in, in behaviour? Is there any concerns around their presentation in terms of their behaviour, their demeanour, their clothing? Are they late to school or refusing to attend? And what is the voice of the child? The voice of the child um, is really important in determining what threshold level um, and where the family um, may sit in the continuum of need because the voice of the child opens avenues to their lived experience, what may be happening at home and how we need to respond. Now, young children in particular are sometimes very literal in what they may have been exposed to or witnessed. They are sometimes able to tell us how it made them feel, what they saw, what they heard, what they touched. Now, capturing all of those details is really important and demonstrating how that then, um, what that means for the child and, and, and how we can respond. Now, if we can capture disclosures of harm or initial disclosures or disclosures of information of any kind that will detail what they've been exposed to is really, really helpful to our team. Um, if there has been a disclosure of significant harm, so anything that may um, warrant an immediate response and, and maybe even involving the police so whether we need to have an initial strategy meeting please pick up the phone please speak to to the mash please please speak to one of our duty social workers um, and we have lots of discussions within the mash and with um, the early help hub and, and locality teams and lots of those discussions centre around the voice of the child. So we want to know, we want to hear what the child is saying and what it means to them. So please, please capture that where you can. So what is working well? So we know that 
Um, in all family units, there are strengths, there are positives that we really need to draw upon when we're considering submitting a MARF. So we need to look at the family support network, their, their support system, consider genograms, cultural genograms, who's significant to them, who is important in their life. Who collects them from school? Um, is there an uncle, an auntie, granny? What role do they play? Um, so placing the child at the centre, really think about the positives in that child's life. So has parental responses and level of engagement been good? Are they attending school and are they attending on time? Are they keeping medical appointments? Is there a early help journey for this family so has there been previous early help intervention and are there referrals or um, service input that we've considered before that, that have worked really well for the family and that have made, made a difference for that child so if you're able to highlight the strengths and highlight the positives we also need that as well. That That's the foundation of, of, of any intervention um, when working with families. So let's hear about the positives and the strengths as well. So significant history and relevant information. So these, again, are some examples of um, do you have a good working relationship with the parents? Have you known this family for a long time? Were you present when there was child in need intervention or when the children were subject to child protection planning? Were you present at core group meetings and heard information that may be relevant today? Have you got any history of safeguarding concerns known to your individual setting? So do you have a history of minor concerns um, that were dealt with at the time and addressed, but together may cause you more concern that may warrant level four intervention. Do you know of any siblings that are living outside of the family home, for instance? Do you know the reason for this? So all of these types of examples are really important and good for us to know and all help in, in establishing where what type and level of intervention is needed for this family so what needs to happen next so we need to ne need to know from you what your desired outcome is what do you think will make a difference to the family and what do you think now needs to happen so give your recommendations use your professional judgment and your expertise use your safeguarding training and really say what you think needs to happen next. Use your right help, right time guidance and cross reference your example indicators. This will give your recommendations some weight and it will also sit nicely in what then needs to happen next and what does social care need to consider? What are the next actions? This will again prevent delays for the family in accessing the right help and the right support. If you need further advice and guidance when submitting your MARF, please pick up the phone and speak to the MASH. We have duty social workers available every day and their core function is to give advice to professionals and agencies. Please use the number stated below. It's option two and our opening hours are 8.45 till 5.15 Monday to Thursday and 8.45 till 4.45 on a Friday. Right out, right time guidance. I've included the link for anybody that is that doesn't have access to the booklet. There's the electronic version and there is the continuum of need outlining levels one to four. If you'd like to access the training for Right Help, Right Time or any further safeguarding training, please visit the website Warsaw Safeguarding Partnership, where you can also find useful webinars and podcasts. I've also included the link for the exploitation tool video and that can be found on YouTube. That's the end of the webinar. If you do require any further advice, information, guidance, please make contact with a member of our team. Thank you.